Okay, we're rather epic three videos for this topic now, but I thought I'd best do one of these since these are usually sort of tied in with the previous question to get you anything between sort of five and eight marks. Usually I've seen them go on six or seven marks. Um, so refresh your mind, what's that previous video, the calculation, what I did where I made the buffer using some sodium hydroxide to actually neutralize some of the weak acid. And it's going to carry on from that. Um, if you did the calculation, hopefully the pH I think my number is correct, got a lot of numbers scribbled on this sheet. You should have came out with 3.42, um, I believe. Stick a comment if you want, if I've done that wrong, I'll double check it in a bit. And the next question says sort of a further 50 cubic centimeters of 0.5 molar sodium hydroxide was added to the buffer created previously. Calculate the new pH. Right, so we need to know the initial moles of ethanoic acid so again that ties in with what was left over previously when we made that buffer let's remember we started with 0.22 but some of it was neutralized so we were left with 0.18 now the amount of hydroxide ion which is going in we will use this new information so 50 cubic centimeters of 0.5 molar so that's going to react with the, the ethanoic acid because obviously it's a base so it's going to choose to react with that. There is another type of question where you could add an acid instead. Now an acid would obviously have chosen to react with this instead so that would have been over there. So read the question carefully think about what it's going to react with. So a base is obviously going to react with the ethanoic acid whereas if you'd add an added an acid it would have reacted with the, the, the sodium ethanoate there. Um, and obviously across here, the 0 0.04, which was created in the final one, when we did react the sodium hydroxide with the ethanoic acid previously. So these are the numbers which we are starting with. And we're going to carry on from there. It is the same steps as previously in terms of the, so the, the hydroxide ion here is going to choose to react with the, the actual missing zero on there, thought that looked a bit odd. It's going to choose to react with the acid. So all of this will react with that. As you can see, the number is smaller, so it's going to make a little bit of a dent in it. So what we are left with, this all used up, Obviously, whatever reacts with this, because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we are going to add to that value. So we are now up to that many moles of the, the salt being formed there. So now all you do, same as before, work out the total volume. So we were 300 cubic centimetres previously. We are now up to 350 if the change in volume is very small if it's like one percent half a percent you can usually ignore the actual change in volume i would probably say don't just work it out get another habit of follow the same steps so we know the moles we now want to work out the concentrations so i'm going to divide by 0.35 because it's the 350 cubic centimeters we were 300 previously We've added 50, and I'm dividing by 1,000 to convert a decimeter cubed. Likewise there. And now all I'm going to do is plug them back into the same equations which you saw before. So plug your K in from the previous equation, plug your new concentrations into there. That will, well, with a bit of rearranging, give you a value for the hydrogen ion. And again, hydrogen ion pH equals minus log concentration of that. And if you can do those, then again, numbers scribbled on my sheet.
3.69. So as you can see, the pH is slightly increased. Why does that make sense? Well, we've added a base. The base is obviously going to remove hydrogen ions, going to push the pH up. If you add an acid, it should have went down slightly. As you can see as well, the change is very small, despite the fact we've effectively added 50 cubic centimetres to a 300 cubic centimetre solution. So it was quite a big volume change in effect. pH didn't really change much. The buffer resisted it. So it's all to do with Betia with this equilibrium in terms of looking at what you started with, what you finished with in terms of moles. Remember to convert to concentrations for putting into this. Um, the only other thing really in the acids and buffers topic is to do with indicators and the actual um, hot well yeah yeah just the actual weak acids and strong bases and such in terms of the graphs just going to quickly sketch one of them I'm not going to sketch all of them for you because you've got the book the book tells you which is which Okay, so this you can clearly see it is a strong base being added to a strong acid. Be very careful when you read the actual words in exams like that. You should be able to say you are starting as an acid, and obviously you are going to base. So the base is being added as an acid. If it was the other way, it would be the strong acid added to sorry, yeah, the strong acid added to the base. Now it will say what indicator should you use. The halfway, this steep line here, you are looking for the halfway point on that line. Your indicator will have a band. It should be a narrow band if it's a good indicator because it should change quite quickly in terms of the colour. You'll see some of the rules, the colour change should be distinct as well. There is no point going from sort of um, lilac to purple. In my mind they are the same colour despite what girls tend to shout when they're studying art. Um, so something like um, the phenolphthalein goes from colourless to pink. Nice and distinct change. You will see they have a band. Usually quite narrow. And you want that band to be as close as possible, if not perfectly on, halfway between that steep line. Sometimes it's the case of choosing which is closest. So it's kind of like the lesser of two evils. But the closer it is the better your actual result for picking up when the, the base has fully neutralized the acid in this case. So that's all you'd usually be able to do in the exams for that. You'd be given a, a list of buffers, sorry, list of indicators and asked which is the most relevant for this reaction or asked what is reacting with what in this. So in other words, strong acid is having a strong base added to it. Uh, I think that's all for the acids and bases topic at last.